are listening to the Bleach Brothers Podcast, hosted by Jake the Hater and B Word. Is the week before Christmas and all through the house. I hate this. Jake the hater is hating and B-Word's a slouch. They're sitting in front of their computers with a sure mic in hand. Shut talking the about fuck up, shit. said the other man. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome into the Bleach Brothers podcast. This is B-Word and I am here with my trusty good fellow, the Grinch. Jake the hater, a.k.a. Krampus, a.k.a. the Grinch. AKA the dude with a two by four in his butthole. How you doing, buddy? I thought you were going to say in the front of my pants because either one could be true. Well, you got wood either way, my friend. That's right. I'm good, man. I ready am for excited. Christmas? I am so excited. I actually really love Christmas. It's one of my favorite yeah. times of year now. I hated it growing up. I love it now. Um, it's. I mean, Krampus is still king, but you know, I like I like me some Krampus, dude. I do, well, is Krampus Day the seventh of December or the fifth? I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, I don't remember. I think it's December seventh. Well, you are an avid celebrator of Krampus. Yes. And when? So, so tell me something. When did you start celebrating Krampus, or when did you start? It's December fifth. When did you it, start like actively? pushing the Krampus button. I think about seven years ago. Yeah. Really hard. Um, it says the sixth as well. So that's why I'm confused. It says in some oh. parts of Europe, they just, they celebrate on the sixth. Um, no, I, I, I do. I, we have a really good friend, listener of the show, Ben, Ben Emmett. I'm going to call him out. I'm up. He and I actually have a war because he thought it was smart to go to battle with me mm-hmm. where on Krampus day and near Christmas, I send him gifts like GIFs, you know, of Krampus, right. right? Nonstop through the month, and like sometimes I'll start at two in the morning and just go. And his wife has like asked him to turn off the phone sometimes because That's I awesome. sent him one, and then he would send me Santa because he he loves Santa and he hates Krampus. And so then one night he just called me and goes, "You win." Like he still does it, but he was like, "It was ridiculous." Because I think I went like twenty four hours straight sending them to him, just not throughout the day. I just kept doing it. And found a lot of them. And I'm, I, I have a book on Krampus. I really like, I like Belschnickel. I like all the evil ones. Like, you know, the ones that teach kids lessons. Yeah. I think they are great um, tools to use when you're ch- just like Elf on the Shelf is technically an evil little fuck. Let's just, let's just put this out yeah. there. You're teaching your kid to have a, a little thing on a shelf that's going to tattle on you if you touch it or if it, if you do anything bad. So he's an evil little fucker. Yeah, I don't he like is. It. Well, we had talked about last month with an episode of Gnome on our Thanksgiving episode that um, I never really got into the whole elf on a shelf thing because it was kind of after that period where my daughter was like really big into Santa and, and that sort of stuff. And it was more geared towards younger kids. But you're pretty avid with that, aren't you? I am. Um, yeah, we do the uh, I mean, the the hardest thing about it. And I'm not trying to break away the magic if kids are listening, but is um, putting them in places that's fun enough, but also that you have to utilize because you can't touch the fucking thing. Right. So like the first year we did it, I put it like, you know, we put it in places where Snowflake showed up. That's the name of ours, by the way. Snowflake showed up in um, all these places. And I was like, shit, I need to use the sink. And I did like, you know, the bubble bath or whatever. Funny story about that, though. So it comes with a DVD, right? B word. Okay. And so my kids open it and they're all excited. They got an elf on the shelf and they're like, we're going to name it. And I said, name it stinky face. Right. Well, so hold we on. Pop- pop- keep, uh, keep that thought process. Okay. I know nothing about these elves on a shelf. Okay? okay. Do they come with a name? You said that they just come with a DVD. Like I have no clue. Like this is all new to me. So, yeah, so, so are they, it, it are they already book. named? You name it. But okay. here, here's my point on this. So that it comes with a book, a DVD, and then like a movie, and then the elf, right? And so you read the book, and it tells you the story about how, you know, you 
it watches you. You can't touch it or it loses magic. And then it flies back to Santa Christmas Eve night. And our elf leaves presents for the kid Christmas Eve. So our kids all get a present from Snowflake before she flies off because ours is a girl. And la di da di da Well, I call it stinky face, right? Okay. My kids get mad at me. Well, they pop in the DVD. And the evil little brother on the movie, right when they pull it out of the box, they went, what do you want to name it? He goes, stinky face. And I was so proud at that moment because I felt I won because I've never seen this damn movie. And I called it. And they named it Snowflake, just like the movie. too. So we already knew, apparently, everything about it without knowing. But yeah, I, I wish we could do Krampus in the corner. I think that would be more fun. And I know there's all these other, there's the mensch on a bench, the Jewish yeah. version now. And yeah. and also now our elf has pets. There's pets for them now. So we have oh the, my gosh. the Arctic fox, the deer, and the dog. They come out every year and my kids collect those. And, you know, it's fun. It's nice. I mean, it is one of those things, though. Like, I have a lot of decorations and I like to get really all about it. Like, uh, what are... So I'm going to get into some of mine, I guess, on this note, traditions. What are some things you do for Christmas or did? Because, you know, kids out of the house now. But you know. Yeah. So uh, to this day, I have never told my kid about Santa verbally. Um, but on I think it was on her 15th Christmas or 14th Christmas. Somewhere in there, I wrote her a letter, you know, as Santa, basically, you know, complimenting her for allowing the magic to stay alive and encouraging her to continue to spread the magic to the younger generations and blah, 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 blah. blah. And when she, when she was still in the house, she actually had that letter up on her wall, which was kind of cool. And she's always been about Christmas. Um, not to like get a depressing story here, but I went through a divorce when she was really, really young okay. and her mom, uh, thought it was evil to celebrate Christmas, which probably, you know, explains a lot about her. But um, so I used to dress up as Santa Claus uh, for a volunteer opportunity. And it was for kids who were like um, in transition. So they were homeless or they, you know, were in poverty or different things like that. And they would come, come to my work and I would dress up as Santa and they would have, you know, a whole ton of different games and whatnot. And so when, when I was married, um, my kid was, was a baby and a toddler when, when I was dressing up as Santa Claus, but, um, a few years later we're, we're divorced and she's with her mom and I was getting her for the Christmas time. And I had asked her, I said, Hey, you know, I'm going to go see Santa Claus tonight. And I, I, I want to know what you want for Christmas. And she goes, dad, you're going to go see Santa Claus. The real one? And I said, yeah, honey, I'm going to go see him tonight. He's going to be, you know, at this event that, that happens every year. And she's like, oh, my gosh, hold on. And I hear her on the phone. She goes, mommy, mommy, guess what? Guess what? She goes, daddy's going to go see Santa Claus, the real one. Can you believe that? And I hear her mom go, honey, Santa Claus isn't real. Your dad's Santa Claus. Oh. And it, she was like four or five. And she goes, daddy, mommy says that Santa Claus isn't real. And at this point, dude, I've got tears in my eyes, like the whole works. And I said, honey, when you're up here, uh, I'll, I'll show you that Santa Claus is real. Well, fast forward a few weeks and I have her for right. Christmas. I was so sick, bro. So sick. Like every orifice was leaking something. And the night before Christmas, we set out cookies. I had to eat part of the cookies to kind of keep it real. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a, we were living in a two story, um, house and my room was on the second story. And so outside, uh, and it actually snowed this Christmas. And so outside of the window, we put footprints or I put fr- footprints on the roof to kind of show uh, reindeer. Right. And I put little twicks out there for reindeer poop and all that sort of stuff. And she woke up the next morning and she saw everything. She saw that the cookies were eaten. She saw the reindeer print. She saw the the reindeer poop. She saw all of that sort of stuff. And it kept the magic alive. And so for me, when you ask about traditions, my tradition is Santa's real. I don't care what you believe. Mm -hmm. I don't care what age you are. Santa's real. Um, If for nothing else, then you're keeping the spirit of Christmas alive for the next generation or the generation after that. So that's pretty much it, man, when it comes to traditions. And I don't want to create a somber thing by telling that story. I will just say that um, keeping Santa Claus alive and having having my daughter share in that has been a huge bonding thing for us. And yeah, so that's see, important to me. See, I found out very young 
but I agree with you that it's just more about the spirit. And it's like, it's one of the most amazing collective things the world has done in a long time. Yep. That everybody's on board, right? Yep. Um, but yeah, we do similar things. So we always do, we always decorate our tree together. We take turns of who puts the tree topper on, which our tree topper, which I mentioned last month's episode, uh, is Gizmo from Gremlins, the Rambo Gizmo that I've always put on the top. We cut down our own tree. So we go and cut a tree down. Uh, at a, a local tree farm that we've been going to for almost what I'd say almost 12 years. We got 13 years now this year. Um, we hide the, my, my wife's part German. So we hide the pickle in the tree. Yeah. Um, yeah. and whoever finds the pickle gets that special present, uh, which one year the kids got a hedgehog and it was named pickles because of that. Oh, okay. Um, I also do a big hot cocoa bar where I go full out. I make my own special hot cocoa, which the secret is, is melted butter for it. So it might not be the healthiest thing for you, but I toast the cocoa powder in melted butter wow. really quick. And then, yeah, so I make that. Everybody loves it. And then I do like, I do a full spread hot cocoa bar where it's like we do that before uh, presents and everything or, or or the night before on Christmas Eve. Just depends on how everything's going. Where you know, you got the dip, chocolate dip pretzels. You got marshmallows. You got all the condiments and everything. So we do that. Listen to Christmas music. Hang out. Um, I used to free or I still freeze flour because we don't always get snow here. Right. And so what I do is I freeze it and then I pour it on my boots and I walk around the house. Oh, nice. So I have the the stops, and then we always make uh, reindeer food. So like so while we're doing like the hot checks cocoa. mix. No, we get like glitter and like just whatever the kids want. They put in sprinkles, glitter, like you uh-huh. have to have glitter in it so they can see like stardust, like you sprinkle it all over so they know where to land. But yeah, right. I like checks mix and just, just random stuff. And they mix it in a giant bowl. They all get like a jar. They all shake up their mason jar and they go and throw it all around the yard. Right. And so that's fun. So those are, those are the little things that we usually do. You know, the standard, like make a gingerbread house or, Last year, I bought them one of those giant cardboard houses and they colored it. And I actually still have that one. I think they did it four years in a row and it finally just like disintegrated. But wow. yeah, that's a lot of a lot of the ones that I we do at our house. Nice. Well, before we continue our, our Christmas traditions, let's go ahead and pause to uh, pay some bills. What do you think? Perfect. In a world filled with COVID and chaos, three dads bring to you a riot of entertainment every hump day hump day we are jordan aka the gnome josh aka the dome aj aka the stone and together we're dads on dayquil between the three of us we have 10 kids (laughs) that we know about (laughs) we're talking about you johnny six (laughs) sit down turn up the volume and crack a cold one as we bring you a glimpse into our dad lives we break down our weekly events with our dad stories and tons of shout outs. Dad Corner! We bring you dad games. We also cover music, movies, and all things entertainment. Hell, we even bring you the Stone Safe House for off the wall references. Hey yo! So come check us out on your favorite podcast platform, even if you prefer certain platforms that we don't. Yeah, we're talking about you, Google Podcasts. Me, 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 meow. Dad's out. All right, so back onto the Christmas traditions. You know, one of the things that I used to do with uh, with my daughter was initially Santa Claus gave her the big gift, right? Mm-hmm. Now, what I found was is as she got older, you know, my gifts were kind of this thing where you know, she needed them like socks or clothes or shoes or, you know, whatever. And then, you know, Santa Claus would come in with like all these great gifts and I got jealous of Santa Claus, dude. Like (laughs) she loves some of these gifts. And here I am like giving her like toothbrushes and, (laughs) you know, all this sort of Mm -hmm. stuff. So I ended up flipping that around when I think she was uh, probably eight or nine years old. And I gave her the big gift or the big gifts and then Santa Claus gave her the uh, the uh, stocking. So how do you do this in your house? So I'm, I'm actually glad you brought that up. I'm going to make a point on yours and then I'll answer the question. Is Because uh, I saw this post the other day where somebody was complaining that you shouldn't make the big gifts from Santa because poor kids in the world or something. Right. And it just really pissed me off because it's like, fuck you. It's my house. You don't. I, I, I'm sorry if my kid goes to school and says they get this and your kid feels bad. I mean, 
there's demographics for a reason. Uh, my goal is if I get my kids a PS five this year, my goal is to not make them go to the school and make your kid feel like shit. Okay. So fuck off. Let me have my thing. If they want to talk about it to their friends, that's what they do. So right. I'm glad you didn't say that. Beard. I just want to go on that rant real quick. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we do where we buy where I have a few Santa Claus bags. Okay. And the kids get a Santa Claus bag and we put random gifts in there. Um, sometimes it's the big one. Sometimes it's a mixed bag. Uh, me and the wife usually sit down and we, we, we divide up what's going to be there. What's not. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't say always the big gift is from, it's sort of all over the place. The difference is we have, um, so we do the, another tradition we do with presents is the, um, need read. Oh, what is it? Wear, want, need, read, and something else where we do five special gifts. Okay. Um, and so you get a book, you get, you know, something to wear, you get something you want, something you need. Like, um, my house growing up, I always got a toothbrush in my stocking. I always got a can of Pringles. I always got a movie. I always got underwear and socks, you know? So there's certain gifts that I still carry on. Like I joke cause I don't love Pringles, but everybody gets a can in their stocking just cause I've always done that. You know what I mean? Right. Always get a toothbrush. Um, so those are the other things, but yeah, with the, with the big gifts, it's, it's a mixed bag. It really just depends. I don't really care. Um, you know, if, if, if they know it's for me or them, I think they're more happy about opening it and having a good time with it. Um, I did notice with my oldest, cause I mentioned her birthdays two days before Christmas, she used to get overwhelmed with presents. Right. She has eight grandparents. She just opened a ton. She has two households too. So she'd have birthday and Christmas in my house, birthday and Christmas in her mom's house, then eight grandparents on top of that. And then, you know, more and more and more. Right. And I remember one year she was so, I've never seen a kid do this. She was so fatigued from opening presents. She goes, can I just put these somewhere else and go play with my toys? I was like, of course you can. And it just made me realize too, that it's not always, you know, the quality, quantity. It's what you're getting them and like how, how the feeling is like, you know, me and my wife get the list from the kids every year that they write to Santa. We go through it. Now, do they get everything on it? No. They sh- should they get everything on it? No. Right. Um, there should be a mixed bag of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and speaking of letters of Santa, I just bought a new mailbox for Santa and I am going to be hanging it on my house for my community, even though I bitched about this on our neighbor's thing for the radio race that we did with KCR, KCRW. Um, I'm, I'm putting the mailbox on my house. I'm going to let everybody know if their kids are in the neighborhood and they want to drop them off, they can do it and then I'll take them, you know, that's cool as shit, dude. Pole, but yeah, yeah, I'm happy about that. That's awesome. You know, I want to, I want to touch back on, um, quality versus quantity of gifts. I know for a bleach bit, um, I actually talked about Christmas and how, you know, it's not really what you what you buy the kid it's just a matter of spending the time with them i think the context of the bleach bit was that's it's really not that hard to be a good parent and what i mean by that is uh for christmas one year i was dude i was dirt poor i think i had 60 dollars to my name which i know that there's people out there that probably have less than that and i'm fortunate enough to to have had that however um you know, similar to you, um, you know, my, my daughter lived with my ex and they had had very fruitful Christmases and I felt like I kind of had to keep up a little bit. And, um, so I ended up taking the 60 bucks and I went to target and I bought a 20, $23, whatever it was, um, set of the, of the Disney princess Barbies. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember the story. Yeah. Yeah. And I went and I bought, um, uh, wrapping paper and stuff from the dollar store. And I bought a whole bunch of dollar store toys. I mean, I was probably like $10 store toys. And then I had enough left over to, to uh, buy us a meal um, for Christmas and, and just different festive stuff um, to be able to make it special. And that night after she went to bed, I was wrapping everything and I was bawling my eyes out. I was crying right. because I felt like, I felt like what I was bringing to the table was inadequate. And I knew what the Santa present was. The Santa mm-hmm. present was going to be the uh, the Barbies because okay. at the time it Santa was given the big gifts, and so mine was all the dollar store toys. And that's where I think that's the year that I actually decided to flip that. Um, but or the following year was the year that I decided to flip that. But um, but I woke up the next morning. Of course, the kiddo was so excited. She was super happy. She loved everything about the holiday. We made pancakes. We did the whole works and she opened every toy. And as soon as she opened every toy, it didn't matter what it was. She was equally as excited 
about the dollar store toys as she was about the, the, the nice Barbie toys. And my point to that is, is that with kids, it's about spending the holiday with them. It's about taking an interactive approach with Christmas. And it's really about just, just having that bond with them. And, you know, it's something that I actually, I actually miss because this will be the first Christmas that I haven't had my kid home. And, uh, I, I, I'm, while she will be home, it's going to be just a couple days basically, right. but we don't get all the stuff leading up to it. We're not going to decorate the tree together, like that sort of stuff. So in a sense, man, I'm, I'm a little envious of what you have going on this year. Cause I know that you're going to be able to, to spend it with your kiddos. Yeah. My uh, brother, sister, and my mama are coming up too. And cause we used to do a, a final thing is we used to get a, an ornament every year. And my mom always bought us an ornament every year of Christmas. So we've had that box. And so I've done that same thing with my kids. But it is it is a little funny because there's so many damn ornaments we have now. Right. And they're all over the place. But, you know, we try to make it fun. And um, I've already got my Christmas shopping done. I uh, I mean, I know it's now that week, but I get it done usually in October. I try to knock it out in October or November just so I'm finished and not be in that last minute. I mean, yeah, I'll get a few things here and there. My wife starts doing it in February and March. And it's good and bad, we word. She'll save a lot of money. But she'll come to me like in November or December and go, I found a bag of stuff that we bought last year. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Like one year, I remember when she found a bag of like when we were moving actually last year, because remember we moved into our house in January. Yeah. We found two bags of presents that never got wrapped <laughs> because she bought them and hid them like a pack rat and they were just back there. So we donated or gave them to other people, you know, kids and stuff like that. But it's just funny to me. Uh, Cause we try to get it done early, but sometimes there's a little too early. Right. Right. Was there a growing up was there. So obviously we had good gifts regardless of the, of the quality or the, the, the dollar amount. I, I think we can all identify, you know, what our best gifts were, but I have a question for you. What do you have like a gift that you got at whatever age that was just like your worst Christmas gift? Yeah. I, I don't typically like to get presents that are, about Christmas. And what I mean by that is I get my ornament, right? And you might get yeah. a snow globe or something. But I got a giant stuffed Santa one year. Oh. And I was just like, what are you going to do with that? Oh, I, I can put it out <laughs> once a year. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm not going to snuggle with this all year. I, I mean, I would never even want to really snuggle with Santa in general. So why am I? <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? uh, but my favorite is so my wife has an aunt and I'm, I've never met this woman. So I can't really speak to a lot of it. Right. But when we get the package from her every year, I know it's the most batshit fucking weird, crazy present in there. And I'm going to send you a picture of this gift if I can find it. She sent me, I don't even know how to really describe this as best. It's uh, it's the size of a license plate. Okay. Okay. And it's a painting picture of a cow. But like, not like a, like a real painting. It's like on a metal tin. And it's like, you know, like printed on like Chinese cartoon, <laughs> like cow on the front of a tin the size of a license plate. And I don't know if wow. it's a plaque. I, I That's honestly the present I got. I opened it up and I looked at my wife and she goes, I can't, I don't know how to explain this to you. Just be thankful. And I'm like, I mean, I'm thankful, but I don't even know what the fuck this is. Wow, dude. That I think is probably, and everybody gets the gifts like that. So it's one of those, I just look at it and go, okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to send you a photo that I think my daughter has it in her play kitchen because there's a picture of her cow and she thinks it reminds her of breakfast. But I, I was B word. I was 34 when I got this. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> what about you? Oh, that's funny. So my mom is very creative. Okay. And what I mean by this is, is that, um, w- when, when I was out of the house, um, I had things that were still in her house and she would find roundabout ways to give them to me. Okay. okay. Now mm. I love my mom dearly. However, I was a teenage dad and when my daughter's mom was pregnant, I got kicked out of the house by my mom. And so I didn't get to leave with everything that I had in my room. Okay. So you remember those Iowa stereos, those like five disc changer, two speaker stereos. Yeah, the cabinet stereo that every kid had in our yeah, demographic. I, I loved that stereo, dude. I saved up money to buy that stereo 
And like, that was, that was my jam. That's, I remember listening to all the great CDs on that. However, that was one of the things that wouldn't fit in the bag that I was able to take with me when I left. Okay. So after my mom and I reconciled, um, you know, the iOS stereo actually was transplanted from my room to the living room and they used it as, you know, the stereo for the living room, which was fine. And I had already had another stereo, but I wanted my iOS stereo back, but I didn't really say, Hey, I really want my iOS stereo. Instead, I basically said, Hey, I'd love to have, you know, or that's my stereo, blah, blah, blah. I just hint, you know? Right. So for this particular Christmas, um, my mom comes up and she, my mom always goes out on Christmas, dude. She, she actually buys really good presents, but for this particular Christmas, there was a present made out to me in the size of my Iowa stereo box. Okay. So I'm sitting here thinking, Oh, it's my Iowa stereo. And so I save it for last, dude. Like I had, I had gotten some things that I wanted for Christmas, some things that I needed for Christmas, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. My daughter opened up her stuff. My ex-wife opened up her stuff. And uh, I saved this, this box for last. It was wrapped. It was perfectly wrapped. My mom does a great job wrapping presents. And I opened this box up. And, bro, you, you know uh, that I played a lot of sports in high school, just like you did. So right. I was in football. I was in wrestling you know, all that sort of stuff. I, in, in middle school, I played basketball and baseball and all that. So I had had cleats and shoes and all this sort of stuff. Well, my mom found my Iowa stereo box and she put all of my old shoes into the Iowa stereo box and wrapped the Iowa stereo box. So when I opened it up, I unwrap my present and I see the Iowa stereo and I'm like, yes, I got my stereo system back. And I open it up, dude, there's football cleats in there. There's wrestling shoes. There's shoes that I will never wear. Like none of these things I can use anymore, bro. (laughs) I just remember feeling so deflated. I was like, (laughs) damn it. (laughs) And, and to this day, my mom doesn't remember actually wrapping that. So when my mm-hmm. mom listens to this episode on YouTube, I'm just going to giggle because like, this is the story that I always bring up about her Christmas presents and she feels terrible for it, obviously. But yeah, at the time, dude, like I was, I was so deflated by that and it was, it was funny, but yeah, definitely the worst one I got. Yeah. See, I, and I know I started out the episode. I didn't really like Christmas growing up. And I mean, it's, I think it's cause I had so many bad Christmases. Like we had one year where we went down to Arizona to stay at a family in the cabin and that was fine. We came back, somebody broke into our house and they only stole my brother and mine's presents. Oh. Coolest thing was though, my sister tried her, I mean, being, being the cool sister she was, she handed us a bunch of her presents, right? And right. she's like, here, I want you to have this. But the problem is she didn't know what was in them. <laughs> so my brother, she had to oh, do was no. a pack of underwear for girls. <laughs> and my sister just, I'll take that back. My brother goes, yeah, I, I think you should. <laughs> and I mean, it was like, it was the nice gesture of her trying to be like, hey, you know, I know you got nothing here. Have this. But it's also funny because she has no idea what's in there. And she's just handing shit off. That's funny. And I still to this day wish my brother would be like, no, I want these pink panties. <laughs> <laughs> Another year, I think uh, what we celebrated uh, February fourteenth, or not, uh, not Valentine's. Day. We we celebrated the middle of February one year because my dad just didn't show up home and it was a train wreck. So I had a lot of years like that, just like bad Christmases. Right. So I think it was it just wasn't one of those. I wasn't one of those ungrateful kids. Like, I, did I always get what I wanted? No, but you know, my parents did their best to make it. What I, my mom did her best, you know, to make sure we had stuff and right. a good time. But I mean, it was just one of those things. It just. I think, I think, you know, a lot of families, they do say fight over the holidays, right? And that was my family. And so I think that it just, it, I was just, I would just rather be over with because of the stress was heightened, right? Right. So do you find now that you have, um, you more or less have control over Christmas that that's, that that's kind of what makes you like it more? Yeah. I think it's like, um, you know, we have our own traditions. We have a good time. Um, we all enjoy each other's company. I, I enjoy hosting. Like I love being somebody who can host um, the Christmas, you know what I mean? At my house or, or even just going and getting together with everybody. And I love giving gifts. I feel like I'm a good gift giver. Um, you know, I, I, I'm very thoughtful, which my favorite thing is like you, and I know you've said this, your daughter's a very thoughtful gift giver. Yeah. And very much so. my four-year-old Adeline, 
is probably one of the most thoughtful gift givers I've ever shopped with. It's actually amazing to me. Like she went and we gave her a certain amount of money to go pick out her sister's gifts and she fucking nailed it. Like she's like, she'll want this type of sweater and you know what I mean? And it says like, you know, love hard or something like, you know, the kids are saying and she like went all out and was like, nope, she likes this color. She likes that. And I'm just amazed for a four year old how like she's very about like, I want to get something somebody likes. I know what they like. She pays attention and it's just good to see. And that's the thing I like about it. Like, I know it's not about the presents, but you know, you get each other stuff, but just the traditions we have, the things we do and kids make it fun, man. I mean, even if I didn't have kids, I think I would enjoy it, but it just makes it that much more. You know, I volunteered for quite a few organizations, um, both professionally and also just civically, you know, or I guess civically, I guess you can call it that. But, um, you know, I've, I've done bell ringing for the Salvation Army. Um, and I think that that's just a really cool thing to do. Um, if you ever have a chance to do it or any listeners have a good chance to do it, regardless if you, you know, if you like the Salvation Army or not, it's, it's one of the things that just being able to give back and seeing people give is like a huge thing. That's just super important in society today. Um, but that, you know, I've done that, uh, where I live, they actually have an organization called holiday with a hero that was started by, um, some law enforcement officers. And so the law, what, what was originally law enforcement officers were dealing with kids who were, um, you know, homeless or, or whatever, they would end up take them, taking them Christmas shopping. And so they would do a holiday with a hero uh, with the police officers. And that has expanded. So it's now police officers, firefighters, National Guard, like all that sort of stuff. Um, and so being involved in some stuff like that is also really cool. Um, you know, we had mentioned, uh, in a previous episode where you were talking about Thanksgiving, working in restaurants where you would actually cook meals. Like I've been a part of cooking meals and stuff for holiday meals and whatnot. I just think that being able to do that is kind of cool. And it's like the whole spirit of Christmas. You know, I I know I reference that a lot, but being able to, to put away uh, societal, you know, norms and really just get down with everybody and, and, and volunteer. Do you do anything like that? Have you, have you done anything like that? I have, I mean, I, I'll try to do the, the donate gifts. Um, I've been out and passed out. I mean, I've, I've passed out hot cocoa on cold nights to, uh, to homeless people. I've, I've done a few things. Do I do as much now? No, I think I more stick to my family. I mean, cause my wife is still in the medical field, so she has to work holidays a lot. Yeah. And you know, and being still, I'm still within the restaurant industry. There's a lot of times I still have to do time around those. So I think, you know, we try to make time around other times or we try to volunteer as much as we can with certain things around those times. Right. But, um, most of my, most of mine is more in, I guess, donation form these days. Yeah. Um, because I mean, it's what I can give. I mean, you can either give your time or money, right. Essentially. Yeah. And so I can't always equate both. All right. So, um, different question here. So Christmas time is notorious with Christmas music. And I use notorious because it kind of starts like the day after Halloween, depending on what radio station or, streaming channel or whatever you listen to, right? Right. When is it appropriate to start Christmas music? Like I know there's a there's a debate on that. Like there are people who will start it the day after Halloween. And it's all about that life until Christmas Day. There are people who will do it like the week of Thanksgiving, the week after Thanksgiving, December first. Like there's a whole lot of targets out there as to why people will start Christmas music. What is it for you in your house? Oh, my house or me? Because my wife runs the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know on our Thanksgiving episode, you had actually talked about, uh, I think it was that night, you, you, your family was cooking or something, mm-hmm. and they were listening to some Christmas music, and that was, what, toward the end of November or whatever? So, but when when is it appropriate? When, what is Jake's definition of the appropriate time to start Christmas music? Uh, the day I go to get my tree, which is usually the day after Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, my wife would do the day after October. We sort of compromise with each other. She'll play it, you know, around Thanksgiving and stuff. And with the kids, it's more that now am I walking around like putting it on? Hell no. Am I putting on right. radio stations for it? No, I typically wait. Now my, my family laughs because, you know, I, I, I would, I can listen to one Christmas album over and over again and I'm happy. Yeah. I can listen to Michael Bublé's Christmas all fucking day. Yeah. Probably my favorite Christmas album. 
Michael Bu- Michael Bublé is actually underrated for Christmas, but it's so funny because him and Mariah come out right around the same time. It's like it's almost like Groundhog Day, right? Like all of a sudden Halloween ends and both of those two crawl out of their hole and they're like, "Oh, it's Christmas time." You know another reason though I think people are so they can get disgruntled about Christmas music? We don't get very new very many new songs. No, there's not a it, whole lot of new songs. It pisses me off. Because, I mean, there, um, did Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton come out with a new one a couple years ago? That was pretty good. Every now and then you get a good, like, Kelly Clarkson or somebody comes out with an original song that's actually pretty decent. My my but, daughter's a huge fan of Ariana Grande. Uh-huh. And she came out with a song recently. I couldn't tell you what it's called. But she came out with a song within the last couple of years, couple few years. And I know that that's kind of hit the charts. What I don't like, though... I, and maybe it's because I'm I'm kind of a stickler on it, you know. I'm kind of like old school or something. I don't like when they take a song and they remake it, and mm-hmm. they either try to put their own spin or their own flair on it. Like I'm very much traditional Christmas music, and what I mean by traditional Christmas music is how I heard it the first time, and that's me. That's very subjective. Yeah, so I'm going to say it, I totally disagree with you. Oh, really? Yeah, because well, one of my favorite versions of. Um, there's a band called Danger Radio. Um, he used to be in the scene aesthetic, one of the singers. And they redid Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. And it's in their style. And I oh, okay. dig that song. And so I don't mind like the the remakes because I think I think you need that, right? Like I I'll throw on a Toby Creeth Christmas and then I'll throw on Michael Bublé's and I like all their different renditions of it. Um because I don't want every song to be the exact same tone and you know strings and like you know what i mean like if carrie underwood sang it and then shania twain sang it and then you know kelly clark's sang it, and they all were doing it in the same like sort of old school rendition it gets really th- then it's re- even gonna piss I, me off more. okay i i guess you're kind of taking that for face value and that's my fault because i probably didn't explain that very well okay but <clears throat> let's say that you have I don't know. Let's say that you have um, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You, right? And I don't know. Um, Shania Twain or Ariana Grande or whoever comes out and sings the same song. Would you want the same type of melodic like character to the song? Like, Do you still want it? It doesn't necessarily need to be in the same key or or the same timing per se, but do you still want it to kind of reflect the original song? I guess no. is what I'm asking. No. You want it to be something entirely different. I want them to do it how they would do it as an artist. I enjoy that more. That's why I enjoy cover songs, right? Like when, uh, well, what's that? What's that new band that's like getting big in the post hardcore scene? Our Last Night, they redo like Taylor Swift and stuff, and it's great because it's their rendition. I don't want it in the exact same vein and the same order and everything. I want it to be different. I, I, I want to explore this a little bit, and I don't mean to interrupt you there, but there was a band that came out. Well, I don't know when the band came out, but they did a cover of um, You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. I don't know what the specific title is. Okay. They're called Small Town Titans, and the dude has an amazing vo- vocal range. Okay. okay. He's, he's got the very deep vocals, and then he's got, he goes all the way up to like high pitched screamo. Okay. And, it's it's very bass heavy the song is very very heavy metal bass heavy um i love the rendition of that but it still sounds like you're a mean one mr grinch or whatever the title is have you heard that one are we talking the same language here i haven't heard it but now i want to okay well your homework assignment is to look it up and maybe we'll even share it on the page too but um small town titans um, I forget what the exact title is, but you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch or, or Grinch or the Grinch song or whatever it is. That's <clears throat> that's one that I love because I love the rendition of it, but it's still in the same vein of the song. Still the same it's, vein. Yeah, I, I get that now. So uh, so I want you to do a homework assignment then and listen to Danger Radio's All I Want for Christmas is You. OK, and you'll get my ass my point because. They do it in a totally different way. Like, yeah, they deliver certain notes, but you, you'll get it when you hear it and maybe post that as well, because I think that's the difference that we're seeing here is like, yeah, there's there's certain points that it's going to sound like that song. So it's recognizable, but it's not almost like a shot for shot. Right. Right. Um, so so on this note, 
with Christmas music. I mean, it's all over the place. And as we said, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, new songs coming out and stuff. And a lot of people just come out with the same, same damn tone and the same, same order of songs, you know, like I think, you know, like silent night and all that crap. But Mm -hmm. if we were going to open up the everlasting jukebox Xmas edition, okay, we're not going to do albums here because that's tough. That's really hard. Top three Christmas songs for you that you're putting in there and you can have one honorable mention. So I think in no particular order. Okay. Because to be honest with you, every year it probably changes. Um, Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. The, uh, is it Dean Martin that sings that one? Um, hold on. Let me look it up. I think it is Dean Martin. Um, I could be wrong. Um, hold on just a second. Um, I, I really like the song and more or less I, it's by Nat King Cole. My, my bad. I was going to say, uh, isn't it Nat King Cole, but I was waiting for you yeah. to look it up because maybe you had your own version or whatever. No, no, it's Nat King Cole. But anyway, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. The reason why this song is, um, is kind of important to me. So you and I were both in choir in high school yep. and we had the opportunity to sing solos at the Christmas performance. And I always wanted to sing chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I just felt like the vocal range that, that it had and I had matched up very well, but I just think it's a, it's a song that kind of sets up the tone. It sets um, the expectation for Christmas. It, it's very descriptive for all of that. So that would be, that would be the first one that I would enter into the everlasting jukebox. What's one that you have? Number one for me is an independent artist. His new, uh, or his name is Ryan Houston. I found him on MySpace Music. He was one of those acoustic artists, you know. And his rendition of Let It Snow is probably my all-time favorite version of that song. The way he delivers it, I think, is just beautiful. Um, And so I've been listening to that, I think, since like 2006. I think you can't somewhere around that time. And every year I, that's probably one of the first songs I put on. I just love it that much. So that would be my number one in there. Like right off the bat, just because I know that's my go to. It's one of those ones that nobody's ever heard. And when they're in my car or whatever, and they hear it, they're like, Oh, who is this? You know what I mean? It's one of those songs. Right. Uh, Ryan Houston does a great job with that. Okay. Number two is going to be Michael Buble grown-up Christmas list. Now, the difference is, I said, the Michael Buble Christmas album is probably my favorite Christmas album, right? Okay. This song is not on there. And I don't know why. It's on the Let It Snow EP that he came out with. And every other song on the Let It Snow EP is on the Christmas album, but this song's not. But I, I love Grown Up Christmas List. I, I think that's a great song. I like the way it's delivered, the inflections of how he sings and everything. And I think my, Michael Bublé can't be topped. So that I think is my... I think he also is one of those people, he just has a perfect voice for Christmas music, if that makes he sense. He has a great voice, yeah. Um. So that would be my number two. All right. and I am going in order, but what would be your second one you're putting in there? So this one is going to go into the everlasting jukebox because of uh, a Christmas movie. Um, the movie is home alone and it's rocking around the Christmas tree. And it's the scene where he has uh, the living room where he's kind of, he's pulled the curtains down and it, he's making it look like there's a party and the song is going on in the background. And I remember there was like a cardboard cutout traveling around the, the living room on a train. You remember that scene? Yeah, that's yeah, the one where he's doing like the the yeah, strings he's, and he's making he's everybody look the like cords. there's a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. "Rocking Around the Christmas Tree" by Brenda Lee is going to be on there. I think it's a cool song, um, and so that's that. That would be the second one that I would enter into the Everlasting Jukebox. Um, if I can, I'll go ahead and and hit my third, and then we'll go to your third. <laughs> um, I really like Tony Bennett. So I think Tony Bennett's a great singer for, um, for a lot of things, but, but ultimately for Christmas music, he's, he's kind of like, um, you know, for the, I imagine everybody knows who Tony Bennett is, but if you don't, um, he's kind of known for the holidays, kind of like Michael Buble. Um, but I like a duet with him and Lady Gaga, Winter Wonderland. And again, it's not the original Winter Wonderland song, but it is, um, 
the same type of melody and chorus and all that sort of stuff from the original. I just really like how they did it. Yeah, that's um, and see with your list, you're going very traditional. I can tell. If I went with duets and I didn't put it on my list, and I'm not going to do this in honor of mention, but I'll say this: um, Is it Redbone and what's the girl from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or Elf? Baby, it's cold oh, outside. Uh, Zoe Dash. No, no, is it Zoe, Zoe Dash now? Zoe D. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that I is know a great Zoe. version of that song. That is a good version of that song, and actually. Um, you you took the song, so I'll just say it. But my honorable mention is "Baby, It's Cold Outside," but it's by uh, Michael Bublé and is it Adina Menzel? I think it's Adina uh, Menzel, the the lady who did the voice of Frozen, whatever the character's name was in Frozen. Um, that was my honorable mention there. But no, the 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 one that you mentioned was also really good too. Yeah. So my third one is um, a little more untraditional, and I went back and forth this because I have. Um, MXPX's Christmas album. Okay. I think it's great, but I went with Blink 182's I Won't Be Home for Christmas. Oh, see, that's a fun one. And I think it's because I remember hearing it on the radio and just thinking, man, it's refreshing to have somebody else. Yeah. You know, do 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 a different style. Cause that's very untraditional. Um, and I know I said one honorable mention, but one just came to mind thinking of totally untraditional. And I don't know if you ever heard it, but Hollywood Undead's Christmas in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, I've heard that one. <laughs> Yeah, I just now thought of that song and the inappropriate, you know, ICP loving kid in me with guys with masks, want, you know, talking about beating up Santa and fucking him or something. I think, yeah, I'm all about that song. But I, I think my number one honorable mention is going to be Wham! Last Christmas. Really? And I think it's because it annoys the fuck out of everybody. Yeah, the, the one that the one that annoys me is I I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. It's fine once or twice, uh, but that's the one that just gets under my skin. Mine you is the one with uh, one of those beetles. Oh, I can't oh, remember his name. Is it Paul McCartney? I know. Yeah, it's probably Paul McCartney. I know which one you're talking about that song too. Sucks. Um, that is the so, worst Christmas song on the fucking so, planet, dude. So you had a second honorable mention, and I'm going to bring in a second honorable mention. It's going to be Run okay. DMC's Christmas and Hollis. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. Um, but uh, but yeah, so so to recap, um, what are your three and your two honorable mentions? Uh, Ryan Houston, Let It Snow. Okay. Michael Buble, Grown Up Christmas List. Okay. And then Blink-182's I Won't Be Home for Christmas. Okay. Honorable mentions, uh, Hollywood Undead, Christmas in Hollywood, and Wham! Last Christmas. The Paul McCartney song is Wonderful Christmas. And that yes. is the, that's the one where they just go, uh-huh. Christmas. I, that is the, that is the epitome of wanting like me to jab a pencil in my brain <laughs> and fucking kill myself. Because that song, it's, a, it's like elevator music turned into a Christmas song. They just yeah. do the same thing over and over again. And yeah. it's like, it's like the happiest hippie who you can tell is on downers trying to be happy singing that shit. <laughs> well, real quick, mine, uh, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, Nat King Cole, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree, Brenda Lee, uh, Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga, Winter Wonderland, uh, Run DMC, Christmas in Hollis, and crap, I didn't write down Baby, my it's old. cold outside. Oh, baby, it's cold outside. Adina Menzel and uh, Michael Buble. So those are the ones that we are entering into the 2021 Everlasting Jukebox Christmas Edition. I think that those are pretty good for this year. What do you think? I do. I do. And, you know, it also surprised me because I was, I was expecting either from either you or me to pick a comedy song, you know, like Weird Al's or Santa like Eight Crazy, Crazy Nights. Eight Crazy Nights or, or you know, even Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. You know, yeah. that fun one. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think, you know, we both sort of went that traditional route. And, you know, it's one of those things I like to sing along to him in the car. I do, too. Yeah. I do, too. I will say I will check out Danger Radio, All I Want for Christmas is You, if you check out Small Town Titans, The Grinch. I will do that. And then you better report back to me because I don't right. ever believe you. Sounds good. So the last thing that we have here is uh, Best Christmas Characters. And we didn't really talk about a number or a theme or anything like that. So I'm kind of curious to see how we match up uh, in just the overall thing here. I'm going to tell you, uh, I think we'll just go one by one if you're cool with that. Sure. Um, so I'll let you I like, start then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's totally fine. I, 
I love the 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 stop motion Christmas films. You know, okay. like those, Me too. those yeah. yeah, the claymation, like yeah, the claymation, yeah, the abominable snowman is fantastic, dude. I love him. I I relate to him quite a bit. I I, I I'm kind of an angry fellow like he is, but then somebody who uh, Christmas kind of turns him at the end. I, I love those types of stories for Christmas, and that's that's going to be my first character that uh, I want to present for our Christmas episode here. So we are the yin and the yang to each other because mine is the gold miner (laughs) from that movie who sings silver and gold. Yeah. And he loves the bumble. Yes. The bumble. Yes. I, that's my favorite character from that movie. I think that little where he's licking the pick when he throws it in the ice and it's like no gold here. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. Right. I'm a big fan of that guy. So, okay. So, I'll, so with the claymation route, yeah, that's, that's probably my favorite one. Okay. You got another one? Uh, Krampus all time. Krampus yeah, is figured, king of all. I figured you would go with Krampus. I, I like Krampus. I am not nearly as big of a fan as Krampus as you are. Yeah. Krampus, Krampus all time over everybody. Now, if I was going to go into not kid movies, um, favorite character is Gizmo. He is on the top of my tree. It is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. Um, no matter what my wife, when my wife tried to argue with me that it's not a Christmas movie, I'm like, it starts out with them buying trees and with Christmas music. So what the hell do you want? Um, if you had to pick a character from a Christmas movie, that's the best all time. Elf. Will Ferrell's elf. Yeah. It's so I'm like not the world's biggest Will Ferrell fan. Like I thought I was when he first came out. I thought he was funny in old school. I thought he was funny in, you know, some of those older movies he was in. Um, but then he did like <laughs> get hard and just some weird movies, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think elf is a freaking classic dude. And, and more specifically, like, I love the fact that he calls the little person, uh, a, an elf, an elf. Yeah. And the dude just gets all shades of pissed off, but he does it so innocently. And I just thought he was a really good character to be able to add in there. Um, it would be for a few reasons. Number one, it was unique. Nobody had done really anything like that before. Mm hmm. Um, you can classify it as a kid's movie if you want to, you can classify it just a general Christmas movie if you want to. Um, and that's why I kind of like that character. It, it's not really like you're watching a kid's movie. You know, you're actually watching a movie. I'll agree with you there. And this is cause I, I be in the hater that I am. I boycotted elf and I didn't actually watch it until 2008. Oh, I think it came out in like 2003, 2002. Uh, so I refused to watch it. And then when I watched it, I fell in love with it. And I got ki- I got asked to go home during Christmas time when I worked at Nordstrom for answering the phone, Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color over and over again? And corporate did not like that because they're not <laughs> fucking fun. Um, Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's an innocent, fun movie. So, okay, I got another, another character topic for you that, or area. Best character in a Christmas movie that's like just a real life person like just normal not like powers not like you know an elf not okay um so my favorite movie is a christmas movie and every christmas i watch a christmas movie every single christmas and you know if you like um if you play uh, or if you have tbs or uh, was it tbs and tnt they play yeah. it all day long um those are um the best ones right right um Oh no, not I'm sorry, not a Christmas movie, a Christmas story. story. My bad. Christmas story. You, you had said movie and that 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 sidetracked me there. Um, but have you watched before I give the character, have you watched a Christmas story? Is that the one where he shoots himself in the eye? Yeah. I finally watched it last year. Yeah. Okay. So I like Ralphie, who's the main character. Yeah. But here's the reason why I like it. So we've talked about um the Sandlot. Yeah, And how the Sandlot is similar to the television show, The Wonder Years, mm-hmm. in the sense where they're both um, narrated. And what I find is funny is that both of them get that characteristic the, the like of the film from A Christmas Story. So okay. how Ralphie narrates it. And the the um, the author of the book, A Christmas Story, is actually the one who's who's doing the narrating in the film. Okay. But I think Ralphie's just a great character. He's relatable. 
Um, I don't think that you had to grow up in that area to kind of understand some of the some of the ironies that happened in that film. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's a really cool character. So that's going to be at Ralphie. That's a good one. Sinbad in Jingle All the Way, <laughs> being the douchebag dad that he is. <laughs> I fucking love Jingle All the Way. Oh, I, hate I that am movie. a huge Sinbad <laughs> fan. And when he fucks with Arnold and laughs at him, I could not get over that. I I I hate that movie, dude. You hate that movie? Why do you I'm hate not, that movie? I, I dude Arnold was good as the Terminator. Get out of here. You're stupid. Ar- I don't like Ar- your opinion. Ar- Arnold was good as Kindergarten Cop. He's not a tumor. Arnold was good in True Lies, which you still haven't seen. Um, I don't know. Aside from, from that. that, dude, Arnold plays the exact same character over and over That's and over. That's why it's great. No, no. And, and, and I didn't and just, pick Arnold. Just, I know, but that's oh, why I don't like the movie, the movie is because yeah. of Arnold. Like, I love Sinbad, dude. As a matter of fact, I love Sinbad when he was a genie that nobody remembered. I do, too, that nobody thinks happened. Yeah, but um, but yeah, that's a whole conversation for another time. That movie is great because, I mean, you got a fucking Turbo Man, right? Mm-hmm. He's a Turbo Man. He's trying to get it for his dad. You got the smarmy neighbor right. who's trying to fuck the dude's wife. You got to, I mean, the one thing is it shows you that th- that kid's a fucking snot nosed kid. Okay. Right. Fuck that kid. Fuck that kid and fuck all those parents. That's, that's what parents, all it was, the reason I love that movie, B word, it was a precursor to the world we were going to grow up in. Oh, it was. It yeah, was letting us know correct. how our parents were. And you know what it started with? The year that came out, I think was a year Tickle Me Elmo came out. It may it have was been. Around I don't there. remember. I, all I know is they are close to each other, and I cor- the theory too. I correlate those two things together because there were a bunch of asshole parents out there doing the exact same thing as fucking Jingle All the Way Over, Tickle Me Elmo. The other part is, I love the fucking um, sidekick of Turbo Man, that purple saber tooth horn thing that just gets like kicked in the balls in the movie. I think that's also another great part of that movie. <laughs> it's just how nobody wants the fucking sidekick. <laughs> They're like that guy sucks. <laughs> I'll just reiterate, not a fan of the movie. Okay. But but on that note, dude, I want to take the opportunity and uh, just kind of wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas coming up or a Happy Holidays or a Happy Kwanzaa Hanukkah. What do you call it? Happy Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa. Hail Krampus. There we go. So that's that's so we can't get canceled. And uh, there you go. Good so with that, Jake, Krampus. <laughs> what do you got for me? Thanks for all the dirty talk and come back and get sanitized. This is Jake from the Bleach Bros Podcast, and thank you for listening to today's episode. I want to bring to your attention our link tree. Visit linktree forward slash Bleach Bros Podcast for access to all of our socials, merch, and streaming sites. Linktree is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash Bleach Bros Podcast, all one word. And if you enjoy our content, make sure to give us a like, give us a review on whatever platform you are listening on, and also invite your friends.